everybody, this is Sophie. <laughs> Wishing everyone a happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, she's not really into it right now. Anywho, aw, well, that's the best I'm gonna get. Okay, and this is something that my son made in school today for St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> All right, so um, I tried recording in class today and we got interrupted. So I needed to redo it. So this is Henry and Beezus by Beverly Cleary, chapter seven, The Boy Who Ate Dog Food. I feel like I'm really far away here. Okay. So the next Friday afternoon, Henry and Ribsy were walking home from school. They were going a long way past the Rose City Bike and Trike shop so Henry could look at what he had come to think of as his bicycle. The one with the racy red frame and the built-in headlight. That's my dog you're hearing. The only thing wrong with it was the price. $59.95. Bless you. It was exactly what Henry wanted, and he looked at it every time he had a chance. After making sure his bike was still in the shop, Henry moved on. He was still trying to think of something he could do in the Rose Festival Parade. Across the street from the supermarket, he stopped to look at the new Colossal Market building that had just been finished. It covered a whole city block, and Henry had heard that the market would sell not only meats, groceries, and drugs, and we're talking about aspirin here, um, but also it would have a filling station. And what's a filling station? What's a filling station? You guys know what that is. Like My second graders know. knew what it was. A gas station. Okay, thank you. A gas station. <clears throat> um, a soda fountain, which is what you would find maybe at 7-Eleven. Uh, you know, you can use Dr. Pepper and all that good stuff. Um, a florist stand. And what's a florist? What's a florist? Flowers. 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 A person who sells flowers. Good. Okay. A beauty shop where you can go get your hair done. Don't look at mine. Um, a hardware store. Oh, what can you find at a hardware store? I found like wood tools to like build houses. And, yeah. Good. And so what kind of hardware stores are there? There's Home Depot, Lowe's, and... Um, Ace. Hand. Now we have Ace oh, yeah, and Turlock. Yes. yes. All right, good. Um, and almost anything else you could think of. And before I go any further, the one, the Colossal Market is the one that was built when Ramona was in kindergarten. And she... Hi, Sissy. And she... Um, Oh, there's the tail. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. She got stuck in the mud, and Henry had to, like, lift her out of the mud because her tail, her tail, gosh, help me, her she, her boots were stuck, her new red boots. That's enough. She's got, yes, my dog has a tail. Okay. Today, there was a huge sign across the front of the building. Henry stopped to read it. The sign said, tonight, grand opening, modern one-stop shopping, deluxe new colossal market. Now ready to serve you, 25 free door prizes, 25 free samples, free gardenias for ladies. And our gardenia is a flower, it's white and it smells really good. And free balloons for kitties, entertainment. And here's what it says right here, right there. <sighs> Jeepers, thought Henry, that's a lot of free stuff. He decided to ask his mother and father to go. It was fun to collect free samples and his mother might like a gardenia. Henry was still trying to think of a good idea for the parade when he and his mother and father joined the crowd of people visiting the new market that evening. Beezus was with them because their mother had to stay home to put Ramona to bed. Henry had given Ribsy a big bone for dinner so he would stay in his yard. If dogs had to stay out of the supermarket, they would really have to stay out of this colossal market. In front of the colossal market, six searchlights sent giant fingers of light into the sky. And a searchlight is something like a, like a big flashlight, but it shines up into the sky, and then they it kind of waves across the sky to get people's attention. That's what a searchlight is. It's like Disneyland. Oh, Disneyland has searchlights? They do it on their firework nights. Oh, okay. Well, haven't been there in a while. Henry saw <clears throat> Robert and Scooter talking to the men who ran the gasoline generators. As Henry and his father and mother and Beezus entered the market, someone handed each of them a ticket for the door prize. After they had written their names on the tickets and dropped them into a barrel, a girl in a fluffy blue skirt gave Mr. Huggins a package of razor blades. Um, and what do we use razor, what do men use razor blades for? 
Shaving. Oh, shaving. Right. I did that last night. Sure. <sighs> that is not true. Another girl in a fluffy red skirt gave Mrs. Huggins a gardenia while a clown, a good clown, offered Henry and Beezus balloons. Beezus asked if she couldn't count as a lady and have a gardenia instead of a balloon. When the girl handed her the flower, she took it, closed her eyes, and breathed deeply. <sighs> oh, smell it, Henry, she said. Did you ever smell anything so beautiful in your whole life? Henry gave it a quick whiff. Yeah, it's all right, he said, tying the string of his balloon to the button on his beanie. Now, what's a beanie? What's a beanie? A beanie is like something to keep you warm. Um, on your cold days, like, so you can mm -hmm. your ears. And Good. So Henry's beanie has a little button on top, and he has the balloon tied up like that. I know why this is really not working here. Oh, well, oh. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, when he put the beanie back on his head, he hung on to it with one hand until he was sure the balloon would not carry it away. After agreeing to meet his mother and father by the front door at 8.30, Henry said, Come on, Beezus, let's find some free samples. Sniffing her gardenia, Beezus followed Henry, who had to stop before long and untangle his balloon string from the buttons of a lady's coat. Then they sampled donuts, hot from a donut machine, and looked over the largest selection of comic books they had ever seen. They tasted frozen orange juice. I lost my spot because we had a noise off camera. <laughs> Great job. Uh, oh, and decided to pass up a free sample of dehydrated VitaVeg soup in order to watch a man demonstrate a gadget for making roses out of beets and turnips. Then they paused at the Colossal Beauty Shop to watch a lady have a free facial. Henry thought she looked really funny with her hair wrapped up in a towel and greasy stuff smeared all over her face. As he caught a glimpse of himself in a mirror, he decided he might wear a balloon on his beanie in the parade. Look! Beezus grabbed Henry's arm and pointed to the platform where three girls from a dancing school had been tap dancing. The drawing for the door prizes is starting. There's the Rose Festival Queen and her princesses. As the crowd pressed toward the platform, the master of ceremonies announced that the owner of the first ticket the queen pulled from the bar barrel would receive, absolutely free of charge, one white sidewall tire from the colossal filling station. So a, a tire is usually black, right? But in the old days, they had a white line around it, like a white part of the tire. I used to have to clean it. Grandpa, or your grandpa, always made me do that. <laughs> anyway, they get one free tire. I don't know what people need with only one. Anywho. Maybe you'll win it, said Beezus. Yeah. Henry wasn't sure his father needed only one white sidewall tire, since all his other tires were black. So he wasn't disappointed. No. <laughs> He wasn't disappointed <laughs> when his name was not called. She wants to play tug of war. I'm sorry. He soon lost interest in door prizes because there were so many grown-ups in front of him that he couldn't see what was happening. Come on, Beezus. I bet this is a good time to get free samples, he said. They found Robert and Scooter in front of the donut machine. This is my third free sample, said Scooter. Come on, let's see what else we can find. They tasted ketchup potato chips, jam, and cheese. Soon, the pockets of Henry's jeans bulged with sample boxes of bottles of Oatsies, Glit, and Three Minute Whiskey. Then, they came to a display of Whoopi's dog food. The man standing behind the table had the children, handed the children pamphlets that explained how Whoopi's made dogs woof with joy because it was made of lean red meat fortified with vitamins. Aren't you giving away free samples? Asked Henry. Seriously, sister. Thinking of Ribsy. No, I'm not, answered the man. And then he added jokingly, but I'll give you a can if you'll taste it. Uh, no thanks, said Henry. Go on, taste it, said Robert. I'll bet you're scared too, scoffed Scooter. I'm not either, said Henry. I just don't feel hungry. Ha, Scooter was scornful. I dare you to eat it. Dares go first, said Henry. Only scaredy cats say that, answered Scooter. Other boys and girls were also collecting free samples, gathered to listen to the argument. Go on, eat it, somebody said. I bet it isn't so bad. <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? Hey, gay, a boy yelled. He's going to eat dog food. I am not, said Henry, but nobody paid any attention. Then, stop. Wolfie's man borrowed a can opener. Oh, the Wolfie's man, sorry. 
from another booth. Hey, she needs the booth. <laughs> Jeepers, thought Henry. How did I get into this mess? The man clamped the opener onto the can. Henry looked for a way out, but so many boys and girls were crowded around that he didn't see how he could escape. He wondered how Woofies tasted. Maybe it wasn't so bad. Ribsy ate it. If Henry really did eat it, he would be pointed out at school as the boy who ate dog food. Then he'd be pretty important. Henry, whispered Beezus, don't eat it. Henry watched the can opener chew its way around the can. Ugh, he thought. He didn't want to be the boy who ate dog food no matter how much it impressed the kids. The man lifted the lid from the can and <clears throat> Henry looked at the food made from the lean red meat fortified with vitamins. At least it isn't raw, he thought and he wished something would happen. Well, something did happen. No, I'm not yelling at you. The voice of the master of ceremonies blared out over the loudspeaker. Henry Huggins. The people all around the platform laughed. Hey, that's me, exclaimed Henry, bewildered. Why were all the people laughing? Will Mr. Huggins come to the platform to claim his prize? Asked the master of ceremonies. Oh, thought Henry, the man meant his father. His father was Mr. Huggins, but it must be a mistake because his father's first name wasn't Henry. Is Henry Huggins present? Asked the master of ceremonies. Henry, wake up, said Beezus. You won a prize. Henry looked at the can of dog food. I'm here, he yelled as loud as he could, and the crowd made way for him. Oh, that was close, he thought. He was so glad to get away from the woofies, he didn't care what his prize was, probably a basket of groceries which nowadays would be important. As Henry climbed the steps to the platform, the audience howled with laughter. Henry looked around to see what was so funny, but he couldn't see anything to laugh at. And then he remembered the balloon tied on his beanie. Oh yeah, maybe that was it. So you're Henry Huggins, boomed the master of ceremonies. Yes, sir, answered Henry, starting at the sound of his own voice over the loudspeaker. Why didn't people stop laughing? A balloon on a beanie wasn't that funny but a dog whipping her tail in your face when you're trying to read a book kind of is. <laughs> a mas the master of ceremonies had an envelope in his hand. Henry, who was puzzled, looked inquiringly at him. What kind of prize was it anyway? He had been so busy at the dog food booth, he hadn't been listening. Henry Huggins, it gives me great pleasure to present you with $50 worth of work at the Colossal Market's own beauty shop. <gasps> Henry's mouth dropped open and he felt his ears turn red. The crowd was a blur of pink faces in front of him and laughter roared in his ears. And here's Henry. Oh, Henry. <laughs> oh, oops. Thank you. The master of ceremonies opened the envelope and took out some of the coupons. Oh, my gravy. Here are all the things this young man is entitled to. Two permanent waves... Six special glamour haircuts, six Vitafluff shampoos, six waves, three facials, six manicures, and last but not least, one set of false eyelashes. Henry looked at the floor while the audience shrieked. Jeepers, he thought. Now she's chewing on something. Now he really was in trouble. The kids would never let him near hear the end of this. Why couldn't he win a basket of groceries or a white sidewall tire like other people? Ah, oh, he wished he had stayed and eaten the dog food. Well, young man, said the master of ceremonies, don't you have anything to say? Uh, thanks, I guess, said Henry, horrified at the way his voice roared over the loudspeaker. The master of ceremonies pressed the envelope into Henry's hand, slapped him on the back and boomed, good luck with your prize, young man. As Henry stumbled off the stage, Scooter got to him first. When are you going to get your glamour haircut? He demanded. When are you going to get your false eyelashes? I bet, Robert stopped to howl with laughter. I bet you're going to be the prettiest boy at Glenwood School. Yoo-hoo, Henry, yelled a couple of strange boys. Scooter leaned against a shelf of canned goods and guffawed. How are you going to wear your hair, beautiful? Henry was sure his ears would burst into flames if he got any hotter. You're so funny, he snapped. I know it, snorted Scooter. I'm not half as funny as you're going to look with your glamour haircut and your false eyelashes. I get it. Joke, said Henry coldly. Hi, beautiful, called the strange boy. How's that Vitafluff shampoo? You're not so funny, said Henry. 
I'll bet you'll look real cute with a permanent wave, said another boy. Henry glared and tried to move away, but there were too many people crowded around him. Jeepers, how was he ever going to get out of this? Say, it's the same boy who was going to eat woofies, Henry heard somebody say, and that gave Henry an idea. Come on, where's the woofies, man? Are you really going to taste it? Robert asked as Henry passed him. Yeah, I'm going to taste it, said Henry bravely. Anything to make people forget that prize, he thought, as the boys and girls crowded after him. Well, I didn't expect to see you again, said the Woofies man, holding out the can and a wooden spoon. Henry dug the spoon into the dog food. Mm, holding his breath, he popped a bite into his mouth and mm, swallowed it really quickly. Oh, that, that wasn't so bad. He hardly tasted it. He was pleased to see that all the boys and girls looked really impressed. He really ate it, said Beezus, squirming through the crowd surrounding Henry. She still clutched her gardenia, but it had turned brown from being sniffed too much. Henry calmly took another bite, held his breath, and mm, got it down. Mmm, he said. It's a lot better than the canine ration. And it was, too, because Ribsy preferred it. There thought Henry. That ought to make them forget the prize. Now, if he could just get out of here before anyone else mentioned it again. <laughs> Here's your free sample, the man handed Henry a can of woofies. You earned it. Hey, beautiful, how did it taste? Asked Scooter. Oh, leave it to old Scooter, thought Henry. Now he had probably eaten the dog food for nothing. Scooter McCarthy, you stop teasing Henry, said Beezus. You're just jealous because you didn't win something like Henry did. Yeah, you're jealous, said Henry, but he didn't really sound as if he meant it. Ha <laughs> ha, joke, said Scooter. Oh, Henry, aren't you thrilled? Beezus' eyes were shining. Henry looked at her. Was she like crazy or something? Oh, I wish I had won $50 worth of work at the Colossal Beauty Shop, she said enviously. Well, what do you know? She really means it, thought Henry. These things were different with girls. Why couldn't Beezus' ticket have been pulled out of the barrel instead of his? Henry, I have a dollar and five cents at home, said Beezus. Will you sell me a wave coupon? I know waves cost more, but that's all I have. Until then, Henry had not really thought what he was going to do with the coupons. He supposed he would have thrown them away if there had been a trash can around. Maybe he should just give Beezus the wave coupon. But still, she was a sensible girl and she had offered to pay for it. A dollar and five cents would certainly come in handy since he had spent all his money at the bicycle auction. Sure, I'll sell it to you, said Henry, delighted with the offer. Oh, thank you, Henry, said Beezus gratefully. Get off the ball. I can hear you. Um, now, I can have my hair waved for the parade. I'm sure Mother wouldn't mind for just something special. Then Henry saw his parents and Scooter's mom looking over the heads of the children. Come along, Henry and Beezus, we're leaving now, said Mr. Huggins. Henry, you and your mother will have to get together about those coupons. Oh, yes, Henry, said Mrs. Huggins. I need a permanent. I'll give you $10 and get it at the Colossal, Colossal Beauty Shop. That would help your bike fund, wouldn't it? Gee, Mom, would you? Henry suddenly felt cheerful. Things weren't so bad after all. And then Mrs. McCarthy said, I don't need a permanent right now, but I will well, in a month or so. I'll give you $10 for the other permanent coupon. She opened her purse and took out a $10 bill. <gasps> Jeepers. Henry was so pleased, he couldn't think of anything to say. Hey, Mom, protested Scooter. What's the matter, Scooter? Asked his mother. Do you want, don't you want me to help Henry? Well, the real answer would be um, no. But, uh, said Scooter, yeah, I do. Hey, this is all right, thought Henry. $21.05, just like that. And grown-ups didn't even think about teasing him. If only he could think of a way to sell the rest of the coupons. And just then his mother said, As soon as we get home, I'll phone your grandmother. I'm sure she'll be glad to buy some of your coupons. Oh, and what about his Aunt Doris? Suggested Mr. Huggins. Oh, yes, and I can phone some of the girls in my bridge club. That's like, It's a card game added Mrs. Huggins. She always called the ladies in her bridge club girls. Henry could scarcely believe his luck. He didn't even have to think of a way to sell his coupons. And only a few minutes ago, he had been wishing he hadn't won them. Why, he might have thrown the riches away if Beezus hadn't offered to buy a wave coupon. Oh, I wish I had won those coupons, said Robert. You're sure lucky. Yeah, I am, agreed Henry. 
Funny. Nobody thought about teasing him now, huh? Come on, said Mr. Huggins. We don't want Beezus' mother to think we've lost her. There goes the boy who ate dog food, Henry heard someone whisper as he left the market. On the way home, Mr. Huggins said to Henry, Your bike fund is growing faster than you expected. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Dad, cut it out, Henry pounded his father with his fist. Everyone Mrs. Huggins spoke to agreed to buy some of Henry's beauty shop coupons. By Saturday afternoon, all the items were spoken for except for one. Can you guess? <laughs> yeah? What? what? I'm in eyelashes. Yep. No one wanted false eyelashes. Ooh. False eyelashes. Oh, I thought it was Ramona's thing. Cheapers, Mom, said Henry. That's almost $50 in my bike fund, and my bike costs $59.95. I'm almost there. Have you picked out a bike already? Asked Mr. Huggins. Oh, yeah, I have, Dad. It's a butte. Butte is like a short way of saying beauty. Beauty, yeah. Or beautiful. Mr. Huggins smiled. In that case, I think we can manage the $10. Oh, <gasps> boy, oh, boy. Mom, how soon do you think I can collect the money for the coupons? Henry didn't see how he could wait another day. He was so close to that bicycle, he could almost feel the handle grips in his hands and see the shiny new spokes twinkle as the wheels turned. His father said, how would you like me to lend you the money until next week? Would you, Dad? Asked Henry eagerly. It's a lot of money. Mr. Huggins rumpled Henry's hair. Come on, get your Daniel Boone hat, and I'll take you down to the shop in the car, and you can ride home on your new bike. <gasps> All Henry could say was, boy, oh boy, as he ran into his room and snatched his genuine coonskin cap. Then he and his father and Ribsy drove to the Rose City Bike and Trike Shop. Henry went straight straight to the bicycle with a racy red frame and the built-in headlight. I'll take this one, he said. You're sure that's the right one? Asked his dad. Oh yeah, that's the right one. Of course Henry was sure. Hadn't he gone all, of, all out of his way to look at the bike at every possible chance for the last two weeks? Henry kept his hand on that bike until his father had written a check and the man had given him a receipt and a guarantee. All yours now, said his father. Gee. Henry shoved up the parking stand and wheeled his bike out of the shop, his very own bicycle. He ran his fingers over the shiny frame and he felt the leather seat. He turned on the headlights and sounded the horn. Ee -ah, ee -ah. And then he unsnapped his snap-on raccoon tail and fastened it to the handlebars. It was perfect. Henry beamed at his father. So long, Dad. See you at home. He threw his leg over the bike and rode off without wobbling even once. Ribsy lopped along beside him and his father smiled and waved. Henry turned down Clickitat Street so he could pass Scooter's house, right? When he saw Scooter sitting on his front steps folding journals, he sounded out his horn, ee -ah, ee -ah. He had waited a long time for this moment. Hey, Scoot, he said casually as he puddled by with his spokes twinkling in the sunshine and his raccoon tail fluttering in the breeze. And that, my dear friends, is the end of Henry and Jesus. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see <laughs> thank you, boys. And I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, with the dog not so spazzy. Bye. Leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and by the way, I want to clear something up. Weatherby family, I love all of you the same. Bye.